I'm demoing here the most recent build after the Hydra in a Box March to June work cycle. So what you see here is the home page of the Hydra in a Box app. Here's my dashboard. I am logged in to a previously created tenant that has some content in it already. I'm going to go ahead and create a new test collection. This is showing that a lot of the functionality, all of the functionality, in fact, that was provided by Sophia uh, continues to be available in the Hydra in a Box application. So I've added a new collection. I'm going to go ahead and add a new work as well. I'm going to give it some of the required metadata here. The required metadata are title, creator, keyword, and rights. I filled out the metadata. The form would expand to show more metadata if I wished. I just went ahead and added a file. I'm going to make this work a part of a, the test collection I just created. And now I'm going to go ahead and share this work with another user in the system and give them edit access. Okay. Then I'm going to set the visibility to institutional visibility. This is all provided again by Sophia 7. I've gone ahead and saved it. You can see the new work is already here and this is its show page. I want to go ahead and show off the um, the IIIF implementation. So I refresh and there is the triple I, there's the universal viewer which is showing off the work we've done on using the triple IF image API to deliver uh, de to deliver thumbnails. So I'm going to go back over to the dashboard. You can see some of the user activity and the basic stats over on the left hand side. I can go ahead and authorize a proxy depositor. That's now done. I'm also going to show the uh, transfer of ownership real quick just to show that still working. So the work I just created, I'm going to go ahead and transfer it to the user I just marked as a proxy depositor. So I'm going to include some information so they know what I'm giving them and why. And I'm going to go ahead and transfer it. Okay, so that transfer has now been created in the system. All right, go back to the dashboard. I see I have a notification lit up, and that was just letting me know that um, I've done that proxy depositor assignment. So notifications are still working, great. All right, now I want to show off some specific stuff we worked on for Hydra in a Box. So you can see we've taken some applications and uh, some configuration, excuse me, and built a UI around it. So you can edit the application name, your institution name, and your full institution name, and go ahead and update that. This We're going to add a lot more functionality to the settings UI. We want folks to be able to make their Hydra in a Box instances um, to their liking, and the settings UI is going to enable you to tweak to your heart's content uh, in a way that's not going to create problems with the upgrade path. So what I'm doing now is I'm showing how you can edit content blocks or WYSIWYG content uh, pieces for the home page. I went back and showed that some of those were uh, they needed editing so I'm going to go ahead and add an announcement uh, which you might use for site maintenance or anything that you really want to catch your users eyes because it'll be in bright red on the home page so you wouldn't ordinarily use this to get your users attention. I'm going to add some marketing text and I'm not going to use the featured researcher widget right now. Gone ahead and updated. Now when I go back to the home page, you can see there's the site maintenance and marketing text right there. And this is all tenant specific. So specific to the foo tenant that I'm working on right now. This is the user role page. It allows you to add roles to different users. Because there's only one role supported out of the box right now, that's why you only saw admin there. Then you can see the repository statistics page. This is going to be the beginning of the administrative dashboard. So you see some Google Analytics um, information graphed there. And here's a way to view more statistics by date. This page hasn't been styled yet, but it's gathering uh, information on visibility, new users, deposits, file format types, all that good stuff. OK. So I'm going to click around again and show off a bit more of the IIIF implementation. 
So here is a photo book that I uploaded. The image content is slightly more interesting than just looking at my face uh, from before. So you can see some of the zooming and panning and rotation that this universal viewer gives us. And this only works because we support the IIIF APIs, uh, the image API and the presentation API. Um, and I'm just to show we have the presentation API uh, working. I'm going to show you the JSON that gets returned by asking for uh, that works uh, IIIF manifest. So there that is. Now I want to show you how to create a new tenant. So I'm going to go out of my foo tenant and go to the main uh, non tenant specific part of the site. So just the splash page. And the first thing you want to do when you are creating a new tenant, I just wanted to verify I wasn't logged in. OK. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new tenant. All you have to do is give it a title and a short name. Those are explained right there, the meanings of those fields. So I've created the new tenant. It's already been created. Uh, you can see that up above. And I'm going to go ahead and create an initial login for that tenant. And this will be the administrator of that tenant. Now you can see on the left there's nothing in it. No collections created, no works created, no recent activity, no proxies. That's because uh, there's nothing in this tenant. It doesn't share state with the other tenant that I are tenants that I've already created. So I have gone ahead and run our bulk import tool and you can see there are now 19 works that have been created and are in the application. Okay. So those 19 works are there, and that's it. Thank you.